Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come to thee and we want to thank you for this day. Before we start asking you for anything, God, I want to thank you for another day that you have allowed us to come back into the house of thine. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy. Thank you for your salvation and thank you for the baptism. Ah, thank you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God, these are thine people. This is your church. God, I don't have to tell you or ask you what they need because you already know. But we are praying that you will bless them according to your riches and glory. God, whether it's a sickness, whether it's a healing, whether it's finance, whatever it is, God bless in the name of Jesus. God, this is your church. We're praying that you will have your way here today. Hey! Thank you, thank you, thank you. God, thank you for your presence and anointing in this place. Now, God, have thine way. Give us a Pentecost anointing in this house today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Everyone be seated, please. Please, uh, I... I give honor today to our presiding bishop, Sherrod, and to all the general board members. I honor Mother Lewis and to all of her cabinet missionaries and evangelists, and to all elders and all of the Lord people. Amen. When I brought up, they say you can't call all names. I sort of put them in groups. <laughs> so I'm not trying to disrespect anyone, but I got a short time. And I'm going to have to use it wisely. I want to know if you would just let me do that. I often say if a man. Uh, preaching and they don't have no followers, he just the main taking a walk. So today I'm going to just ask, is, is, is the house of God in the house? Uh, is, is Northern Georgia in the house? So y'all see I'm not just taking a walk. I thank God for our presiding bishop because he is a man of honor and he was a friend of mine. He is a friend of mine. I knew his father for years and I still can thank him because uh, when my wife went to be with the Lord, I called him to do the eulogy. And he didn't hesitate or nothing. He didn't say, I would be honored to do it. And after that, so many people asked me, how did you get to preside in Bishop to do your wife funeral? I told him I just asked him. <laughs> and he didn't get nothing but to say, I'd be honored to do it. So, I appreciate him because that's the kind of man he is. He don't look over, he don't have no big eyes and no little ears. I think he look at everyone. I've been told, I see some of my elders down there too. I was told coming up, you will never mount to anything. You will never mount to anything. You will never be nothing. And I'm, I ain't talking about just people in the street. Preachers told me that. Ain't no need of you trying to start no church. You ain't going to be able to build no church. 
So uh, I got some million dollar churches that are built and they pay it off. And I can't tell you how good the Lord has been to me because he certainly has. The Bible, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. It's a different thing when you were sent than when you just went. See, I don't have no doctor. I just got a B.A.C. So if y'all don't know that, I did go to school now, but I didn't get no doctor. But if y'all don't know that, what that is, that bone again Christian. Hey. And I have the Holy Ghost. And I do speak in tongues. Woo! Glory. My mind. I'm getting ready to move on. I'm getting ready to move on. But I want to say this. As he said, I was married for 66 years. And uh, some people took my chick on the side. I didn't have no chick on the side, no girlfriend either. I had a three in one. I had a girlfriend, I had a love, and I had a wife. And I thought that I had to be in church every time the doors were open, but the Lord spoke to me and he said, this church is my bride, but your wife is yours. And I start taking money off and made her a queen for a day. She didn't have to do anything. She didn't have to cook breakfast, dinner, or lunch, or nothing. Sometimes she didn't have to make up the bed, because I did that for her. Then the men used to call me, boy, you just hen peck. I said, that ain't no, no problem as long as you being pecked by the right hen. Yeah. And then I told him, if you got a good peck, I'll let her peck you. I'm trying to help your brothers out here. And then they told me, man, you are, uh, uh, I wear the paints in my house. I wear the paints. I said, I do too. All of them she put out for me Saturday night to put on Sunday morning. I'm going to get to my message, but I want to, I, I, I'm on the lady side, because see, men want to be macho. They feel like if they shed a tear, they, that's the weak. No, 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 that, 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 that ain't it. That ain't it. See, and, and brothers, I know this uh, meeting, but if y'all help me, see, you got to be happy in the home, too. I don't want nobody hypocrite in the house and trying to preach to me in the church. So now, if you have a good wife, treat her like she your wife, that she your honey, that she your baby, that she your sugar, and that she your sweetheart. If you got a good wife, she can be anything to you you want her to be. And women like compliments. Come on, sister, y'all got to get with me now.
When your wife get ready to come to church, you, you, you at a certain time you want to leave the house, she'll put on her clothes and she'll look, come to you and say, how this look? You, you just, <clears throat> she fit to go change again. She put on another dress, you holler, <clears throat> she fit to go change a grin. When she put it on and come in time, stand right and you see, how this, this look, you better say, baby, you look good in that. And then you fit to get out the house. <laughs> if you got a good wife, she dressed to please you, right. not anybody else. He's not concerned, a good wife is not concerned about any kind of man trying to hit on her. She want to hear it from you. We did a lot of seminars, too. I'm going to tell you one more thing. You don't forget about your wife. Never think about her. If you got a girlfriend, you're always trying to show out for your girlfriend. You know, rat your little pennies in your pocket and whatnot. <laughs> show out for your wife. <laughs> hey, I'm all right, bro. Hey, I'm I'm okay. Show out for your wife. Now, the way you show out for your wife, you go to the drugstore, buy one of them mushy cards. And then when you buy that card, you put your mush on it. Sweetheart, sugar baby, you know, all like that, you know. And then you put a piece of money that you got to know your wife, because there are three places she's going to go to before she get in the bed. She's going to the mirror in the bathroom, and she's going to make sure she got that little cream or whatever on her face to make it look good. And she gonna go to the mirror when she come in the house to make sure her hair good and put on a little sleeping cap. And she gonna go there and have a card right there. And then you have another, this is the big card right here. You take one and you put a big piece of money under that one and you put it under the pillow. And now is here's the last one. When she turned that pillow back and opened that car with all that good talking, mushy stuff, and that big bill in there, you ain't got but one more thing to do. Look up to heaven and say, Lord, give me strength. Take that lesson now. I wasn't hearing the paint. I wasn't hearing the paint. If she were here today, we would have on about the same clothes. That's why I said I wore the one she put out. She always left trying to dress like me. Well, I dressed like her, so that was it. Now, I'm not telling you something that I read in the book. I'm telling you something that happened in real life. And she would always tell me, you will never get another woman to treat you better than me. And all of you knew my wife, you knew that with her. She didn't meet no strangers, and you didn't never leave home, her house hungry. She always would feed you. Amen. So the children used to always talk, we'd be in the house, y'all need to get somewhere and sit down with your old selves. I don't care how old you get, how long you be with your wife, don't take the hunt out the moon. <laughs> now I'm fit to go on, I got to, where my watch keeper? I, mean, I got to have a watch keeper. You got it, y'all got it. All right. Okay. Let me get this thing out my face here now. Thank God for our presiding bishop doing a great job.
Now, I'm going to tell y'all, uh, I've been rebuked. I've been scorned. I never be nothing, but the Lord proved them all wrong. And I remember one time when I got saved, I'm going to tell you all how I got saved. I was listening to uh, the presiding bishop said how he got saved. My wife got saved, and she really brought me to the Lord. When she was young, she was a great dancer, you know. She just danced, danced, and uh, so when she was seeking the Lord, the Lord took that dance from her. And he put her on her knees. And uh, I would keep the children. She'd go to church, and she always looked. She, now, she was a good looker. Now, y'all know that. <laughs> you know she was a good looker. And she would dress real nice and put on these nice dresses and put on these stockings and come back home, tore up from the floor up. <laughs> and she go back to church the next time she come back a stock or two up the hem out the skirt <laughs> and all like that i said now nah, i got to go to this church <laughs> got to go to this church because something ain't right here <laughs> but when i went to the church every time the spirit got on she got on her knees crawling and going on those shoes getting in that skirt Pulling the hem out of them stock and get tore all up. I said, everything all right now? <laughs> then I went to church too. And I told me just like this, they call on Jesus. And God, I got on the altar and I called him and they said, call him a little face. And I called him a little face. The, uh, you know, back in the end when I got saved, you know, they didn't have all this uh, hygienic stuff. I'm for real now. I'm serious, but I, I'm a little comical too. And one was on one side, one on the other. Call him, call Jesus, call Jesus. One right in my face. Call Jesus, call Jesus. <laughs> I had to hurry up and call him. <laughs> I had to hurry up and call him and let him come. <laughs> I was taught in the bishop class, keep clean hygiene, keep yourself clean, keep yourself, your breath selling, smelling clean, because you're always in somebody's face praying for them. And you don't want them to fall out from your breath. <laughs> My topic for today is the third party. The third party. Then Peter said to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, to all that are for all, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exalt, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that was gladly received his word baptized, and the same day there was added unto the church three, about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfast in the apostle doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and prayer. So we see, uh, I, I often, people, people often come to me and tell me the church is not like it used to be. Well, the church is like it used to be. The church, because this building is not the church. We that are saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost fear if are baptized, we are the church. So Jesus didn't leave no denominations back here. I love to name the Church of God in Christ because it is Christ's church. And I love that name. So many people come by the church. And not, now don't say the church is not like it used to be. If you got a little dampness in your life or something, then you not like you used to be. Uh, I'm, 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 that's, that's truth. 
Because the Bible says our temple, our body is the temple for the Holy Ghost, and God don't dwell in no unclean temple. So now if your temple is not clean, the Holy Ghost is not going to buy there. And God don't share crop. See, God don't share crop with you through the week time and on Saturday night, and then you get up Sunday morning and want to be saved and got it all because just coming to the building don't save you. The church come to the building to worship the Lord in the body. You see, the body have many parts, but you, and sometimes maybe your finger is not to you, is not as strong as you think maybe your feet. And another thing is that sometimes when we get saved, God plays all of us in the body where he want us to be. And sometimes we are not satisfied where we are, so we trying to move in on somebody else. And sometimes that's why the spirit don't move like it should move in our congregation because you are not in your place. You see, the Bible tells you about God gave some preachers, he gave some bishops, he gave some pastors, he gave deacons, and then he just gave some helps. So if he just gave you the job of a help, you just help. Yes, sir. You don't try to tell the presiding bishop what to do. You just, you do what he tell you to do. If we going to be obedient, the Bible says we got to obey the rules of them that rule over us. I can't go to presiding bishop and try to tell him how to do his job when my job is just a preacher. Y'all got quiet on me there. Well, let me, let me put it like this. Y'all sister was with me. Well, brothers, y'all be able to get with me. Yes, sir. But I ain't afraid of y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you the same thing, too. Y'all, ain't no need of y'all looking up there. Oh, he old school. He going to beat these women down. I ain't going to beat now, woman. And if you physically trying to beat one in front of me, you're going to have me to attend to. My wife ain't had a scar on her nowhere. I just loved her. My kids say, I get, daddy, your mama go, you ought to get tired of her. I never will forget her. 66 years. So the brothers, the brothers, we got to understand this. The Bible says our wife is our helpmate. And just because you the man and you supposed to be the head of the house, well, that's good too, but sometimes your wife's ideas are better than yours. Well, I know I'm mixing it up. I've got, I got some soup here today. And my wife, anytime I wanted to do something, she didn't quite agree with it. She wouldn't say, you ought to do this. She would say, have you ever thought about it? And then she wouldn't tell me you ought to do this. She said, but if it was me now, this is how I do it. And then I get to thinking, I said, yeah, that's here's a good way. And then if you called me Henny Peck, I loved it, that pecking. <laughs> Let me move on. And the Bible says, and they continue, steadfast in the doctrines and fellowship in breaking of bread. I want you to know that what the church needs today is some insta power. You, you know, they don't need that power. You got to hurry up and come down and hurry up and come down. And when, when uh, uh, I'm going to tell you, listen, then I'm going to go on. I'm going to stop talking. My, my, my children say, I'm going to die. Daddy, you talk too much. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to tell you like that. I remember rebuke. I've been scorned. I have prayed for people, and people tell me you shouldn't have put your hand on them, and you shouldn't have did that, and you shouldn't have did that. I follow the direction of the Holy Ghost. 
If you don't want me to put your hands on me, I won't put your hands on me, but God leads me who to put hands on. All right. And one guy, when I got saved, he said, the Bible say, if you slap me on one cheek, you turn the other one. I said, yes, sir. I said, but the Bible didn't say what I supposed to do after you slap me on my second cheek. <laughs> so now y'all can get slapped all y'all want on all them cheeks, but if you slap me two times, that's it. <laughs> I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, but I ain't no fool. That's it. <laughs> oh, well, we need the answer to power. You turn on a switch and that power will produce light, heat, or either cold. Twist the knob on your radio and that power will produce a voice. And octaves will rock. Pop tune when the power surges through the car on any electric motor, it will blow dry your hair or pull a train. It invisible power travel at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. It is invisible power of 50,000 straining horses flowing through the wild, no thicker than your finger. Such power without doubt is the greatest need in our church. Other words, it is instant power of another soul. The power of the Holy Ghost, spiritual power defined. What is the power of the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is the third person in the Trinity. Yes, it is not easily understood. Science may understand the mysteries of interrelationship of electric, Light, but no human genius have yet can comprehend the mystery unit of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> On the authority of God's word, there are some things we can say about the Holy Ghost. He is a person. The same as God the Father and God the Son. Ananias and Sapphira lied to Peter, and Peter said, Why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? One can only lie to a person. Every attitude that can be ascribed to God the Father can be ascribed to the Holy Ghost. God is everywhere. I'm going to take I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to say a little thing. Sometimes uh, we want God to do everything for us. And, 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 and God, in other words, the Bible says we are bought with a price and we are no more our own because he bought us with a price. Now, in some time, we won't know, Lord, what can I give you? What can I do for you? I'm going to tell you this. Now, you can't give God anything. I'm going to tell you the last thing you can give him. You can't give him money because the gold and the silver is his. You can't give him a steak because the cows on a thousand hills are his. You can't give him no fish because he put the fish in the sea. You can't give him none of that stuff. You can't give him a lamb because he created the lamb. You can't do that. I'm going to tell you one thing you can give him. That's your body. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. That's all we can give God is ourselves. Yes, Can't give him nothing else because we own everything else. So I, 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 I sort of ask you today, will you make a promise with me? Say, Lord, I give my body to thee. So, and now, and the angels answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come up on thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The baby Jesus was brought to the temple where he was met by Simeon, whom the scriptures say the Holy Ghost was upon. 
And it was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he has seen the Lord Jesus Christ. If we live in today, we don't have to see death if we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior because saints don't die, they just sleep. Hey, God, thank you. And I tell you, all right, good, I got good eyesight and I can hear good and I don't have amnesia and I'm looking out over the altars and I see some sleep. <laughs> if anybody decides you sleep, hunch him. Say, <laughs> so you can't receive the blessings of the Lord, sleep. And they came by the Spirit to the temple when the parent brought the child Jesus to them for he after the custom of the law. Then took he him in his own, blessed God, and said, Lord, now let us thy, thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation. When Jesus was baptized and the Holy Ghost descended in a bottle the shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, and thee I am well pleased. After Jesus' temptation, he returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee, and, and he taught the people in the sin of God, being glorified of all. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearts, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to eat that live those that are bruised. I'm going to stop right here again take a station break. This Sheep, my preachers, is not our sheep. Yes, the sheep belong to the Lord. And we ought to be thankful for that God looked at us and saw enough in us to make us the under shepherd of his sheep. Amen. Jesus claimed to reform his miracle by the power of what? Not by that, but by the power of the Spirit. Yes, sir. And he commanded his disciples to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The promise of Jesus, Lord, I am with you always, was fulfilled in the coming of the Holy Ghost. When Jesus ascended to heaven, he sent the Holy Ghost to the earth on the day of Pentecost to teach, comfort, and guide the church. Guide the church. His power enabled us to begin preaching the gospel to the whole world. Later, Peter went to Samaria under the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Peter went to Cornelius' house under the leadership of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost set people apart for the ministry and the deacons. Why no power? It would be the understatement of the year to say that many of our churches are devoid of the power of the Holy Ghost. As was known in the New Testament church, but could it be that we are not acted engaged in the witnesses as the early church. You see, that sometimes we don't have time to do what God saved us to do. He saved us to, re to, to represent him through the church. He saved us to be a witness to the people. And sometimes our lifestyle don't show the people nothing. You got to live something is to be something. You got to live a lie for anybody to want to hear you. You can't be one thing through the week time and another thing Sunday. If you're going to live for the Lord, you got to live for the Lord 24-7. So, we as the church need to be about our father's business. I say this now, I had, I had a, a, a almost church full of people before the pandemic came. And when the pandemic came, you know, they shut the churches down. Then we started back again with FaceTime and, and, and uh, all of this stuff. <laughs> what, 
and, and, and a lot of my members told me, uh, you know, I can get used to this. <laughs> they were sitting home looking at live screen. And they still sitting home. I don't know about you, I'm telling you the truth. I got some, a lot, come, a lot of them still sitting home drinking coffee while we out there sweating for the Lord. I hurt my back and they bought me a great big chair to sit in. I sat in that chair with them arms on the board and I was preaching up something. And I told them, I can get used to this chair too. <laughs> but I'm getting out of this chair as soon as the Lord let me. Yes, and the chair in the back somewhere or another. But so, and another thing I put on my Facebook, if you're religious, that gets you up Monday morning to go to work. <laughs> And they can't get you up Sunday morning to come to the church. I'm afraid it ain't gonna get you into heaven. You see, we can do everything we wanna do. But when it comes to God, we tired. Uh, oh, I'm sick. I don't feel good. You must be don't know what the words say. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. With his stripes, we were healed. And faith will receive your healing. You got to have faith. Now, if you have faith, hope will get you there. But faith going to show you what you need, where you need to go. I'm sorry, y'all, about this. I don't normally preach like this. I'm telling you, I got a lot to say in a short time to say. So I got a, I want to get you in the car. I don't want people to just come to church and don't be helped. If you come to church and get happy and go home sad, that ain't no good to you. You ought to come to church and be happy. Oh, Lord, I, I feel good for going to search the Lord. Touch me today. The Lord revive me today. And I'm going to say this right here now. Look at the person next to you, sitting to you, and say, whatever you have for God to do, you need to tell him now. Because a miracle either is coming at you or it just passed you. my high. Yay, glory, glory. So we need to get up. And Jesus gave us a promise. But Y'all help me to get this thing out of here. I pull it out. No, <laughs> it glued in there, look like. But ye shall receive power. Take it out, Take it out, Take it out. I don't want to break nothing. Come upon you. You shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem. In all Judea and in Samaria and to the othermost part of the earth. The Greek word for power in this verse is dumons, from which we get our word dynamite. The dynamite of God in our lives, in our church, will be evidence when we are willing to be witnesses for Christ. One of the secrets of Pentecost was that there were more lost people hearing the gospel than there was Christian witnessing. The Holy Ghost has is to convict of sin to righteousness and judgment. If his main office was work of conviction, the loss of sin, and bring them to Christ cannot be done, the Holy Ghost will not be present. The Holy Ghost may be resist. Because he said, you stiff neck and uncircumcised and hard, you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your father did, so do ye. He can be grieved. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed on the day of redemption. And he can be, and the Spirit can be quenched. 
quench not the spirit and he can be like a dove. Like a dove, the Holy Ghost is easily driven away. But if lost people are not being told about Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost power cannot be known. When we read our Peter preaching one sermon on the day of Pentecost, that resulted in the salvation of 3,000 people. We could either ask, what is the matter with our preaching today? Even though we preach in our day, may need some improvement. The main reason for the lack of power in our service on Sunday is the absence of present personal evangelism during the week. And the early church they witness. Christ need witness today. Tell of his goodness. Tell of his salvation. Like electricity. The Holy Ghost will not go in unless he come out. Those who are filled with the Holy Ghost have an unusual unrest and win another to Jesus Christ. Like D.L. Moody once said, I want a faith that has legs and can run. He told a group of Chicago laymen, stop using the hymn. Hold the folk. I think we should get out from the high nephrotication and put on a tight. The devil is rampant. What are the Holy Ghost folks doing? I heard Jesus say, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is speedy for you that I go away. But if I go not away, the comfort will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he come, he will prove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin, because they believe not on me, of righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you see me no more. We need power, power of the Holy Ghost, power from on high, power in our life. Tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. And I heard Jesus say, I'm going away, but I will not leave you comfortless. I'm going to send back the Holy Ghost. He shall lead you, guide you, direct you, teach you, bring things to remember. What I say, we need power. Do you need power? Do you know the third person, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Is it anybody here? Know the power of the Holy Ghost. He'll pick you up, turn you around, plant your feet on solid ground. He'll power, he'll give the joy when you're sad. He'll give you strength when you're weak. He'll give you salvation when you're a sinner. Tell the Lord, thank you. Do you know the third party? He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me his own. Oh, the joy that I have while the Holy Ghost tearing there. Yes, yes. When I was sinking deep in sin, never to rise again. Jesus, look beyond my fault. And the Holy Ghost picked me up, got in my body, got in my heart, got in my tongue, and gave me a brand new speech. He cannot a little, she 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 cann
thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you don't feel the power, throw your hands up. Say, Father, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know is that withdraw that self for me. Uh, I don't have no way to go. Lord, feel my hand, feel my mind, feel my soul, feel my mind. Lord, I'm the old. You bought me on Calvary when you died on Calvary. When you spoke the word, it finished. You bought my pardon. You bought my salvation. You bought my healing. You bought my deliverance. You bought me a ticket in heaven. Till the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Feel me. Feel me. Feel me. Again. If you don't know, I just said, feel me again. Just tell the Lord, do me over. Do me again. Let me feel your present power. Let me feel your holy power. One more time. Uh, I want to be a witness for the Lord. Who want to be a witness? Brother Lord, I want to be a Holy Ghost field, sanctified, speaking in tongues. Holy Ghost, witness. I want the people to see Jesus in my life. I'm going to tell you this, and I got to quick. Your position don't make it. Your title don't make it. But your character it make you, because I heard Jesus say, by this all men shall know ye are my disciples when you have love, love, love one for another. Hey. Come on and get along some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. you got what it. time? What time I got? got How many minutes? You want me? You want me? You got, got it, Bishop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got it, Bishop. Ah. Woo. I'm about to hear a rush. Ah, ra, 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 ra. Ah. Now let me tell y'all. My greatest anointing is when I'm praying for people. And I, and I want to do this today, just to lie. They say, they said I had an hour to do my thing. Y'all, ten minutes. You that need some prayer. Uh, you that not saved and want to be saved. If y'all just let them come. Just come right up through there if they'll let you. If, if, no, if it's all right, Brother Pitch, if they just come right through there, I guarantee you I won't be long. <laughs> now, let me, let, let me tell y'all something. Y'all don't know me. Y'all don't know me. But when I was a deacon, God was using me to lay hands on people. I was just a deacon. And I would lay, run all through the church like a wild man and lay hands on people. My wife, I'd go back home. <laughs> No, 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 no. I go back home and she say, you know one thing, I said, what that, baby? You make me shame. <laughs> I don't have no shame when it comes to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I don't have no shame. I don't have no shame. Ah, nah, nah, he she got a little shame. <clears throat> Mother, can I touch you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got a little shame. Oh, my God. They gonna walk through. 
just stay right there. We got your arm. We got your arm. Up and out. Up and out. Come on, come on. Anybody. Anybody. Ain't no arm. Come on, come on. Up. Come on, come on. Let the sick come through. Let the sick come through. Oh, it's down there. Let the sick come through. That's all right. The power of the Lord to have. Yeah. Go ahead, Bishop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I don't know shit. Yes, Lord. 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 Yeah, I want. I need a praying lady up here. I need a praying lady up here. Hallelujah. I'm telling you this, mother. Wait, 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 mother. Hold on. I'm going to direct you. I don't lay my hands on women's anywhere. Yeah. I had a preacher one time praying for the women's, and he, he say, you go to the doctor, the doctor examine, I ought to be able to feel you where I want to feel you at. Because I'm Holy Ghost feeling the fire baptized. No, I don't do it. Come on, mother. Come on, mother, right here. Right there. Ah, no, no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all do this. For all of y'all that in line, yes, join hands. Yes, sir. That's it, sir. 
Join hands. Join hands. The spirit moves from person to person. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, we come to thee. Yes, Lord. We come to thee. Yes, Lord. Lord, you created each and every one of us. Yes, Lord. You know what Satan trying to do. Yes, Lord. He's trying to attack your body. Yes, Lord. Our bodies belong to you, and he's trying to yes, attack Lord. your people. Yes, Lord. But your blood. Your blood. Yes. Your blood here. Yes, Lord. Your blood saved. Yes, Lord. Your blood deliver. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, touch everyone today. Yes, Lord. Touch them now, not by power, not by might, but by your spirit. Yes, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Hey. run from person to person. Yes, Lord. Seat to seat. Yes, Lord. Pew to pew. Yes, Lord. Touch now. Touch now. Touch now. Touch now. God, you showed me your vision. Yes, Lord. That you want to do a corporate anointing. Yes, Lord. God, this is the time. Yes, Woo! Lift those hands, lift those hands. Yes, All over the church. Yes, Lord. All over the church. Yes, Lord. And say, Lord, Lord, send that corporate no anointing on me. On me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Send that anointing, Lord. Send that anointing. 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 Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive what you want from the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Oh, God. 